So in this video, we're going to continue our exploration of statistical models that build off of conditional densities. Linear regression can best be imagined as just fitting a line through some cloud of data. But we'll try to describe the model in a little bit more detail, even though at first I'll keep it in, you know, let's say basic English. And then I'll provide it notationally using like random variables. So we'll then give a statistical description of the model. I'll try to draw some pictures next that help us visualize what linear regression looks like in theory. And then we'll jump into R to continue our segment on show me the data that will help us see how linear regression is actually applied to a real data set. So let's start with our description of linear regression. Linear regression relates one one, spelled with an N and not an M, numerical variable to one or more numerical or not, but we won't look at this ourselves um, right now. Uh, in fact, we won't look at or more either. We'll just stick to one numerical um, variable. So wait, through a line. Linear regression relates one numerical variable to one numerical variable through a line. That is the functional form of a line. You probably think of it as like mx plus b. There's some slope m and some intercept b. We won't use those same letters because the world of statistics is crazy, but it's not that crazy. They just choose betas with subscripts on them. They're not that bad. The way we think of this statistically is we have some random variables, specifically capital N of them, and we imagine that they come from a normal distribution with a mean that looks like, okay, so I'm trying to draw a little x here, but my little x's turn out to not look great. There's a good little x. So our mean is just this form right here, where x is now some numerical variable, five, six, seven sort of idea. And the mean is a linear form in some numerical variable x. So this is actually a conditional density, even though it's not often written out like that. We have some numerical y data that is given conditionally based on some value x. And we assume that the data themselves are distributed normally with a mean where the x-axis values are related to the y-axis data via this linear form, just a line, intercept, and a slope. And we recognize that not all the data are going to fall on a line. So I think that will um, better be understood what I say when I say not all the data will fall on a line, I think that'll be better understood through a visualization of linear regression. I'm going to draw out what linear regression looks like in theory, because we have, coming up after this, um, some exploration of a real data set in R. So the way we are to imagine this is we have a bunch of data between x and y variables. Let's just assume we have a bunch of data that are linearly related because we're in the world of linear regression. So here, it's clearly the case that as x goes up, y goes up. 
And because there's no kind of curvature to these data, it looks like there is a linear relationship. So theoretically, linear regression is trying to fit a line through the center of these data, something like this. This line is characterized by this functional form. Beta naught, the intercept, here it is. Oh, hang on, it's not. Let's be as accurate as we can. Plus beta one, the slope, times x. So really what we're doing here, actually let's do it a little bit down here, is if there's some value x, let's call it x1, then we assume that the, the value on the y-axis is going to be beta naught plus beta 1 times x1. And realistically, what that is, is a conditional expectation of the y-axis variable given x is equal to little x1. And we're specifying in the notation of the model that there's this conditional relationship between the normal random variables y given some x-axis value, like x equals to whatever x1 may be. So if you're asking where does the normal distribution show up in this such that the conditional expectation is as specified, you got to imagine the normal distribution kind of displayed vertically now. So at a given x-axis value, what we actually are assuming is there is a normal distribution right here. I tried to draw it as best I could. Where the mean of that normal distribution is this conditional expectation. The mean of the normal distribution at this particular x value is this conditional expectation. And so this normal distribution has the variance sigma squared, which is essentially taking into account the fact that not all the values are going to fall on the line itself. This sigma squared variance here is essentially saying there is noise in our data, and we are going to try to fit the line through the center of the data. Now, the crazy part about these conditional expectations is that we're actually assuming a new normal distribution for each new x value on the x-axis. And at this particular x value, we're predicting a different y-axis expectation. So here, the predicted value for y at this new x value depends on that value of x. So this is a different value for the conditional expectation since x is now taking on a different value. And this is the world of linear regression. There's certainly more to be said about how these models are fit to data but we'll at least jump into R and see it in action, even if we're not studying the mathematics of it in this class. So up on my website, let's go to this web, um, page I've named Datasets under the section Meta. And I'm going to scroll down to a dataset named Hospital. You can read about it here in the uh, text readme file, but I'm just going to jump straight to the raw data and I will explain the data as we go in R. So I'm going to name the data set hospital and I'm going to read it in using this function we're getting a little bit more accustomed to, read.csv. And the data set consists of one hospital's data where this 7.13 is the average stay of all the patients in this one particular hospital. This variable age is the average age of all the patients in this one particular hospital. So just picking out another value here, this 57.8 is the average age of the seventh hospital, of the patients within the seventh hospital of this data set. And x-rays is an average 
Beds is a sum, the count of the number of beds in the hospital. Region is a uh, variable that indicates where the hospital is located, separated into four regions in the US. And then the number of nurses is the number of nurses that work at the hospital. The only variable I haven't explained is infection risk. This is a not very intuitive number that tells us the likelihood, almost think density, of the infection at that hospital. So the higher the number is, the more likely an infection is to occur for any given patient at that hospital. And the lower it is, the less likely infection is to occur for any given patient at that hospital. But it's like density in the fact that it cannot be below zero and it can be above one, whereas this is not a probability because we see a bunch of these numbers are above one, is closer to a density of infection risk. So what we're gonna try to do is convince you all that hospitals are not particularly safe places to stay at long-term, even if they are highly recommended to go to when you're sick. So I'm gonna try to regress um, infection risk as my y-axis variable on stay. That's like asking questions about the longer I stay in the hospital, how is my infection risk going to change? So to do that, we'll just turn to our handy function plot, which you can see in that tooltip there, asks for the x-axis variable first, which in this case is going to be stay. And then I'll put infection risk on the y-axis. So in this case, we see that as you stay longer in hospitals, your infection risk tends to go up. As you stay longer in hospitals, the x-axis variable is doing the explaining. The longer your stay, the more infection risk you will incur. X-axis is doing the explaining and the y-axis is responding to the x-axis explanatory variable. So the y-axis is responding to the x-axis variable. And here, by the data, we indicate, we see that the longer a patient stays in any of these hospitals, it appears to have a positive relationship with infection risk. So we're going to create a new object named fit, where I'm going to fit a linear model with infection risk on the y-axis. This um, Function LM goes a little bit backwards from what you expected out of the plot. Here, we specify the y-axis first to say, let's regress infection risk on stay, and we'll use the data set hospital to do so. Now, in order to visualize that line over this plot, we'll use a function named AB line, and we'll plug in the value fit to it. I don't particularly know why the function is named AB line. Um, maybe just to separate out the function name from a different potential function named line. I don't, I don't know. We'll just have to go with it. So here is, based on the data itself, a best guess, this is an approximation of the expected infection risk given some value on the x-axis. And we're literally specifying through a conditional density that infection risk depends on the x-axis variable stay through a linear relationship. So this is the visualization of approximate conditional expectations of infection risk given some value of stay. This is a direct application of all of the tools we've been building to at this point in the course. So this turns out to be pretty cool world of statistics that is now open to us through the lens of conditional densities.